Top 12 people that Trump is petrified of who are female. Oof, you want me to narrow it down to 12. Uh, should we start then of uh, VP Kamala Harris at 12, the history making uh, uh, vice president? You just know uh, she is his nightmare. All right? She's achieved high office. And there's nothing that she says that he can really combat. So uh, actually, if you notice, it doesn't say too much at all. Back to her. That the country can survive a second Trump presidency. Journalists. Do you think that the country can survive a second Trump presidency? Listen, the, the former president has made very clear he admires dictators and has said he'll be a dictator on day one. You know what dictators do? They jail journalists. At 11, there's a late, well, I'm a Brit from the outside looking in, so I should know more about Sally Yates, but I didn't. I uh, discovered her during the, I think it was the second impeachment of the former guy. Found her amazing, stunning, very on the point, with facts, brought receipts, and you know Trump, if he saw her, would just how to skelter in the opposite direction. ...to vote. His constant attacks on the FBI, the free press, inspectors general, federal judges, they all have one purpose, to remove any check on his abuse of power. Put simply, he treats our country like it's his family business, this time bankrupting our nation's moral authority at home and abroad. Let's go into the top 10 with, <laughs> I think that gives it away, Nancy Pelosi, just Every time you've seen them together, it's almost like Trump almost bows down. He knows he's in the presence of greatness and it isn't him. Uh, she is so spot on the money. Even what she said recently about uh, Trump mixing up uh, Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi, you can't disagree with what she's saying. Put aside the substance of what he was saying when he was talking about Nikki Haley and Nate. Anybody can get a name mixed up seven times is kind of a lot. But... But the fact is, he was lying about the fact that he would not send the National Guard mm -hmm. to, def to the Capitol when Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, and Nancy Pelosi were begging him to do it all day, begging the Secretary of Army and the Secretary of Defense, acting Secretary of Defense, to call upon the president to do that, making that appeal to him. He refused to do it, causing death, damage, destruction, defecation, and all the rest disrespect for our Constitution, our Congress, and our Capitol. So it wasn't about, let's put aside what he was talking about. He was lying about what he didn't do. And he was saying Nikki uh, wouldn't accept his 10,000 troops, which he wasn't sending, yeah. but it was... Nine, there will be a few people, no doubt, who you would, or probably me would put in the category of a... Uh, never Trumpers, as in Republicans, now against Trump. Morning, Joe. Uh, now, clearly, they were at one stage besties with Trump. They saw the light, something happened, and now, wow, dynamite. Camera, microphone, Mika, Trump, that would be box office. Uh, he's got no balls to do it, though. Shame. He, well, he get trounced. Donald, you're a sick person. You're a sick person. To put this family through this, to put her husband through this, to do this just because you're mad at Joe because Joe got you again today, because he speaks the truth and he speaks plainly about your lack of interest and empathy in others and your lack of ability to handle this massive human catastrophe, the fact that you've made it worse and that you make it worse every day and that you won't even wear a mask to protect people from your germs. But the germs you're spreading on Twitter, first of all, Twitter, you shouldn't be allowing this. And you should be taking these tweets down. And you should be ashamed of yourself. You'll be hearing from me on this because this is BS. Right, next stop, let's do, uh, I think out of all the criminal cases and civil court cases, etc., uh, that former guy has against him, the one in Georgia represents, for me, his biggest nightmare biggest problem and uh, Fanny Willis is just not messing around she intends to deliver the goods and score home runs today based on information developed by that investigation a Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment 
charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. We are counting down the women who most terrify Trump. Uh, we probably left a few out. If I've left out any who you think should be in the list, feel free to add them in the comment section. At seven, let's put the lady and the server, yawn and her emails, yawn, Hillary Clinton, who is, well, I think she occupies a space permanently. There's probably not a lot going on in there. Uh, inside former guy's head. We would get legitimately elected. Mm -hmm. And then they would try to do away with elections and do away with opposition and do away with a free press. And you could see it in countries where, well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right. Right. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, somebody with those tendencies, though, dictatorial, authoritarian tendencies would be like, oh, OK, we're going to shut this down. We're going to throw these people in jail. And, and they didn't usually telegraph that. Trump is telling us yeah. what he intends yes. to right. do. One thing you will notice about the former guy, uh, the females who are close to him are not the ones who have a position where it's going to be anything that could be debated, anything that's going to even make a, uh, you know, a piece of candy floss suddenly think it's got competition. Cassidy Hutchinson is somebody who's really, really, for me, such a strong, confident person. Uh, used to work in Meadows' office, and at the um, hearing into the interaction, literally delivered the goods. She is Trump's pro. He would never, ever go near her. That's for sure. Um, you know, you chose to speak out at risk of your career, your community, even your life, the threats that you received. And something that has struck me in the kind of post-Trump era, uh, may that be here soon, is it's women that are speaking out, whether it was Liz Cheney, whether it was you, Sarah Matthews is in our audience, also testified before Congress um, against Donald Trump. Why is it that so many men didn't step forward, but it seems to consistently be women telling the truth about it? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, I, I can't speak to the psyche of the men who have either willingly defied their own subpoenas or have had convenient lapses of memory throughout this process, but it does seem to me that the women are willing to step forward and the women are the people who are... Let's talk about um, the judges. Trump recently has been really, I would say, pushing the mark at having a go at judges. Uh, in particular, um, Sonia Sotomayor, who's a Supreme Court justice, and what he had to say about her is it's kind of appalling. Um, he, he wants to keep his fingers crossed. He never, ever is in a room with her because she will just guaranteed... Give him what for. You tweeted about Justice Sotomayor yeah. uh, yesterday, saying that she and Justice Ginsburg should recuse themselves from future cases dealing with the administration. What is the basis for your opinion on that? Well, it's very obvious. I mean, uh, I always thought that, frankly, that Justice Ginsburg should do it because she went wild during the campaign when I was running. I don't know who she was for. Perhaps she was for Hillary Clinton. You can believe it. But uh, she said some things that were obviously very inappropriate. She later sort of apologized. I wouldn't say it was an apology, but she sort of apologized. And then uh, Justice Sotomayor said what she said yesterday. You know very well what she said yesterday. It was a big story. Just outside the top five at six, let's put Nikki Haley. Uh, Nikki Haley would like to debate Trump. For reasons best known to him, he has no excuse, no reason. He's just saying no. It doesn't matter that he's the leading contender. Why is he so petrified to be in a studio, a live TV studio, even pre-recorded with Nikki Haley? I mean, at one stage, I think history shows, he actually gave her a job. So why is he scared of his former employee? You think she has the goods on him? You think she has the mark on him? Yep. He didn't just get me confused. He mentioned it over and over and over again. Mm, yeah. He's not what he was in 2016. He has declined. Mm. That's a fact. All right, into the top five then. At five, uh, New York AG Letitia James, who is literally pulling the Trump organization to well, these, pieces, uh, they, they, shredding it with facts, and truth, and so details of criminal oh, operations. He is uh, terrified and, of frankly, her, I'm not sure petrified. Sure that both parties would want that. Uh, I think that 
Trump views this, uh, the optics of this, is working to his advantage. Look, people looking at this live picture right now uh, will be either filled with rage or they will be thrilled. We're in the top four. Four. Liz Cheney. Now, Liz Cheney, interestingly enough, as far as I see it, she's probably the most conservative person who doesn't like Trump. So ideology wise, it makes her a very strong and credible person when it comes to her standing up against everything the former guy has to say, mainly and principally because she believes in the Constitution first. Among the most shameful of this committee's findings was that President Trump sat in the dining room off the Oval Office watching the violent riot at the Capitol on television. For hours, he would not issue a public statement instructing his supporters to disperse and leave the Capitol, despite urgent pleas from his White House staff and dozens of others to do so. Members of his family, his White House lawyers, virtually all those around him knew that this simple act was critical. For hours, he would not do it. Three we need to put in uh, Jean Carroll. Uh, Jean Carroll has waited a long time to have her say, uh, to get the judgment, and now $83 million and years later, she is literally, I would say, giving him nightmares. Manhattan Federal Court on Friday ordered Donald Trump to pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million for defaming her. Now, the jury, Phil, according to Katursky's reporting, broke that up into two categories. They awarded $18.3 million in compensatory damages and $65 million in punitive damages. And, you know, obviously this is a ruling that didn't take, as you noted, long for this jury to get to. It took him just under three hours. Donald Trump not in court for that. Um, but that is a remarkable number. Ah, oh, there is one person that we, what, you know what, we will make it a joint, a joint one at this number, Maxine Waters. There was a time when uh, the Trumpy Trumps at, during the last administration were obsessed with anything and everything Maxine Waters had to say, and she don't care. She's still there standing, and she will tell him right to his face what she thinks of him, that's for sure. And we'll also, uh, just because I'm trying to get everybody in at the same time before we get to number one, uh, let's put in his niece, Mary Trump. Yeah, let's put them tied at number two, because I can't really, you know. I think they equally, if out of anybody, because they've known Trump a long, long time. It's every move, all right? Mary Trump can match Trump word for word, lie for lie, every dollop of BS he's come out with, and she will and does trounce him. I have been very clear about my opposition to this president. And everyone knows what I believe. I believe he is one of the most dishonorable deceitful and despicable people ever to hold public office. In this case, what's happening is that he is being forced to confront the possibility that he's not going to be able to get away anymore uh, with pretending that he's a successful businessman. Now, the fact that that myth survived the extraordinary work that Sue Craig and Russ Butner did uh, in 2018 is kind of mind boggling. But this is happening in a much more public way uh, because Donald's actually there, which just goes to how extraordinarily important it is for him to try to spin this case away from the truth, which is that he's an entitled loser who did nothing but waste his father's fortune. I mean, it and number one, I guess it's no surprise. What more do you want me to say? They are petrified of her in every single way. And so is Trump. This is his worst nightmare. In fact, I don't think he'll even mention her name. He won't. He just will not. He'll let all these sycophants, but he will not mention. If Trump mentions the name Taylor Swift, well, I'll be very surprised. Very, very surprised. Some journalist needs to ask him about Taylor Swift, actually, just to get him talking about it. Why is Fox News obsessed? We have had enough of Taylor Swift for she now. Should be on should just Taylor Swift with a huge O with Taylor Swift. The New York Times just speculated she's a lesbian. We uh -oh. have and her boyfriend Travis Kelsey, <laughs> sponsored by Pfizer. Well, what's her stance on politics? Don't get involved. Don't get involved in politics. We don't want to see you there. 
Because every time they do any of this... I mean, my goodness, if you need Taylor Swift... We just sit back and think, well, Taylor hasn't even said anything yet. But she has encouraged an awful lot of people to make sure they are registered to... Taylor Swift comes out against Trump. I don't care if they write that. She votes against against fair pay for women she votes against the reauthorization of the of the violence against women act which is just basically protecting us from domestic abuse and stalking stalking not even melania's As endorsed her is it husband or is it amelia <laughs> 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 horizontal partner i am the borg